Let me know when it ends. Uh, apologizing to our viewers on Ustream and the, inter uh, the internet because we are having technical difficulties but we will upload the program later on tonight or tomorrow to uh, Ustream and to YouTube. Well ladies and gentlemen tonight we are going to talk about several things but they all lead to the same thing. We're going to talk about Syria. We're going to talk about the Middle East. But the last time we talked about Syria, now as most of you know, we only come to you once a month because there's really not much to talk about. We've been talking about this for the last 11 years before it even started. We've been talking about the war in Iraq before it even started and everything we have talked about in the last 11 years or 12 years, it has very much been right on the spot. But let's talk about Syria. Syria did something, well not Syria, but uh, the, uh, if you remember, last program we were looking at the United States standing Feet away from feet away from Syria, ready to push the button. Everyone was talking about war. All targets were ready. England sent destroyers. The United States sent five of them, with many support ships. The military was ready. They were only waiting for the green light from Obama to start with the cruise missiles to destroy Syria. This was the picture we were looking at last time we talked. The United States was ready to go to war. England was ready to go to war. And then all of a sudden something happened. No war. Now, we said, the United States said that it drew red lines, that if chemical weapons are used, that the United States will go. As you know, John McCain was very much ready to, he's been ready to actually start a war with Syria. He was just itching to start a war with Syria. He was so sure that the war with Syria was going to go on that in the Senate hearing about Syria, he was playing poker on his phone. That's how confident he was that finally his wish was coming true. What happened? Why did it all stop? Well, we're going to tell you why did it all stop in a little bit. Continue watching. And you will be shocked with the information that you're going to receive tonight of why did the United States stop the war. Why, when it was only hours, 
It was only hours away from pushing the buttons to annihilate thousands or hundreds of thousands of people in Syria. This limited thing and very small thing that was, no, there's no such a thing as limited and small. Not with all the guns that we put on the coast of Syria. And not with the guns that England sent in and France was sending in. Then the whole thing stopped. What happened? You remember David Cameron, it was, you know, when they hit Libya, they didn't go to the British Parliament asking them that they're going to go to war against Libya. Obama, when he actually went into the war with Libya, he didn't ask Congress, he didn't go in front of Congress and said, hey, look, we're going to bomb the heck out of this country and we're going to destroy it. That's exactly what happened. Killed its leader. Killed Gaddafi, its leader. So the West went into these Arab countries and killed the leaders without congressional approval, without United Nations approval, without the British Parliament approval, and France without the French Parliament. But in France, it's a little bit different. The president does not need the blessings of his parliament to start a war. He just has to tell them, to tell the, uh, uh, his parliament within 90 days from start of the war of why he started the war. That's the French law. That's why France, when England said, I'm going to go to ask Parliament. Ask the Parliament why. You already sent in the destroyers. You already sent in the Thunderbirds. You already sent in the tornadoes. You already sent in the missiles. And you were ready to start bombing. So why after positioning all these ships of the coast of Syria, everything had to be done and it had to be done quickly? Now, the British Parliament was not in session. It was going to be another week or the following week before they actually be in session. Now, why couldn't he wait? Why Cameron, David Cameron couldn't wait to actually, for the next week, to go in front of his parliament and asked him. No, he called for an emergency meeting. It had to be done tonight. Hurry up, we've got to do this tonight. Why? Well, you are going to war, so why go and ask the parliament? Maybe you did not ask those questions, but we did because we're watching everybody and we know when something is unusual and right away, when David Cameron said he's gonna go to the parliament, that was a big flag for me. And then when he called them that they had to come that night, then I knew it's a big, big flag. Something is wrong. And then when his own, when the members of his own party don't show up to the vote, that was another bigger flag. And then when member of his party that actually voted against the war, that was as that was the mother of all flags. What happened? Why did Cameron actually organize this thing to fail? He went to the British Parliament to fail. He wanted a vote of no. And right away, England said, okay, we're out. We can't do anything. And then Obama, all of a sudden, even though he was going to war, and even though he already put his ships ready, 
and his military commanders told him, we got the targets ready, we're just waiting on you to tell us to push the button. Right away, Obama was talking about going to Congress to get their approval. Well, why? You are going to war without their approval. And no one, by the way, if you go back to that day when Obama said, I need to get approval, no one was talking about, hey, Obama, why are you going to war by yourself? No one. Why are you not getting uh, congressional uh, approvals? No one was even asking for it. He wasn't being pressured to go to Congress to get their approval. But, but he had to. So what happened? Why did they have to run and get out of bombing Syria? That's the question. And that's the question that you have been listening to me here for the last 15 minutes wanting to know why. We're going to tell you why. But let's talk some more. Let's talk some more about what is actually happening in Syria. Well, in Syria you have three major groups. You have the regime of Bashar al-Assad. You have the Free Syrian Army, which is basically mainly Syrians, mainly Syrians, because they do have some foreigners uh, within them, but mainly Syrians, who very much took it upon themselves with the help of the Muslim Brotherhood internationally, and in Egypt, and in Jordan, they're getting help from the Muslim Brotherhood. They're getting help from Saudi Arabia. They're getting help from Qatar. But also you have another group in Syria called Al-Nusra Front. Now, these are new kind of Muslims. These are new breed of Muslims. By the way, I have been a Muslim all my life. And if you go to many of the Muslim countries, you will not see people looking like that, dressed up like that. And by the way, this is, if you go back to the other picture, this is this Anasra group actually killing prisoners. When in Islam, you see, you have got to differentiate, and this is another one killing uh, soldiers, uh, Syrian army soldiers, prisoners, that these people have taken, these, these uh, 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 cowards have taken alive with their hands behind their backs and they're blindfolded, they're shooting them. And these are supposedly Muslims. The group that is shooting, the group that is killing, this vicious killing, killing prisoners, cutting open their hearts and, and, and eating their hearts. They supposedly do it under Allahu Akbar. God is great. If you go back 20, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, if you went to Muslim countries, you did not see those images of Muslims. Now, the image of Muslims in your head, it's these long beard, screaming, uh, gun-toting. That's the image of a Muslim in your head. But 99% of Muslims don't look like that. They don't dress like that. So who's, who's, who's bringing these people? Who's training them? Al-Qaeda? Al-Qaeda, the one that the United States actually helped establish and financed until the end and until